Welcome to Mary's Library and Book Spot. I'm Jane Miller. And our books for today, When Sings My Soul by Robert Morgan. And they are stories about our hymns. Let's be, oh, thanks to Brandon Glick. He will be furnishing music behind each story. And many thanks to Tom Winter, who makes this program possible. Let's begin November 1st, All Saints Day, with a great hymn for all the saints whom their labors rest, <laughs> written in 1864 by an Anglican clergyman, William Howe. Now, he was born into a very wealthy British prestigious family, and he attended Oxford. He got a degree in law, and then he entered the Anglican ministry. Well, right away, he was offered to be Bishop of Manchester or Bishop of Durham, England, and that had a very large and prestigious uh, congregation. William Howe turned both of these offers down to become a country parson in a rural, poor parish near the Welsh border. There he labored for 28 years, during which time he wrote 60 hymns. Then he was transferred to London and soon became bishop there. However, he continued to minister to the poverty-stricken people of Victorian London. And in fact, he was called the poor man's bishop and also the omnibus bishop because he refused to ride in the private coaches for the bishops to use. William Howell tended toward liberalism in his theology. He was all for the new theory of evolution by Darwin. As his son later said, my father considered evolution to be the wonderful way in which the Lord formed man out of the dust. And so here is his hymn, For All the Saints. Next hymn is a lovely old hymn. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing, dated 1597. Well, I thought this was an American hymn. We weren't even a nation yet in 1597. The pilgrims hadn't even landed yet. This is an anonymous hymn to the melody of a Dutch folk song, and in 1957, the Dutch had just won a bloody religious war against Catholic Spain, and the Dutch were free to worship as they chose. So that explains this line in the hymn, the wicked oppressing now cease from distressing. We can only guess that the hymn was known to the pilgrims and the colonists who came to America for their religious freedom. Or perhaps the Dutch brought it when they settled in New Amsterdam along the Hudson River. It's an American Thanksgiving song now. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. Let's have an American hymn. Go tell it on the mountain. During the bitter days of slavery, black workers on American plantations 
found comfort in song, and they created a unique form of American hymn singing, the Negro Spiritual. It was the Jubilee Singers of Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee, that took the plantation songs of the Negro slaves to the entire world. These songs had been unwritten, and they had been handed down from plantation to plantation, from generation to generation. But at the university, was a professor of Greek and Latin, John Work, and he got those Negro spirituals written down and published, and his two sons carried on the same work after he died. John Work has been called the first black collector of Negro folk songs. Now the story is that every Christmas morning, John Work would take students and his neighbors out caroling, and this song was their favorite. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere. I conclude now with an American hymn, a patriotic national one, God of Our Fathers. This patriotic hymn represents a double celebration of America's 100th birthday. In 1876, a New England pastor who had served in the Civil War wrote the words to honor the 100th anniversary of the writing of the Declaration of Independence. And then 12 years later, the words were put to music. The music was written by a renowned organist, George Werner, and he wrote in the trumpet sounding before each stanza, and I know Brandon will enjoy that immensely. God of our fathers, whose almighty hand. <laughs>